Sing a new song to the Lord, for he has worked wonders. In the sight of the nations he has shown his deliverance. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. You're very welcome to Mass today on the fifth Sunday of Easter. Coming together as God's family with confidence, let us ask the Father's forgiveness, for he is full of gentleness and compassion. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You intercede for us with your Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son. Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, constantly accomplish the Paschal mystery within us, that those you were pleased to make new in holy baptism may, under your protective care, bear much fruit, and come to the joys of life eternal. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. About this time, when the number of disciples was increasing, the Hellenists made a complaint against the Hebrews in the daily distribution their own widows were being overlooked. So the twelve called a full meeting of the disciples and addressed them. It would not be right for us to neglect the word of God so as to give out food. You, brothers, must select from among yourselves seven men of good reputation, filled with the Holy Spirit and with wisdom. We will hand over this duty to them and continue to devote ourselves to prayer and to the service of the Word. The whole assembly approved of this proposal and they elected Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit, together with Philip, Prochorius, Nicanor, Timon, Parmaeus, and Nicholas of Antioch, a convert to Judaism. They presented these to the apostles who prayed and laid their hands on them. The word of the Lord continued to spread. The number of disciples in Jerusalem was greatly increased, and a large group of priests made their submission to the faith. The word of the Lord. May your love be upon us, O Lord, as we place all our hope in you. Ring out your joy to the Lord, O you just, for praise is fitting for loyal hearts. Give thanks to the Lord upon the harp, 
with its ten-string lute sing him songs. For the word of the Lord is faithful and all his works to be trusted. The Lord loves justice and right and he fills the earth with his love. The Lord looks on those who revere him, on those who hope in his love, to rescue their souls from death, to keep them alive in famine. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. The Lord is the living stone rejected by men, but chosen by God and precious to him. Set yourselves close to him so that you too, the holy priesthood that offers the spiritual sacrifices which Jesus Christ has made acceptable to God, may be living stones making a spiritual house. As scripture says, See how I lay in Zion a precious cornerstone that I have chosen, and the man who rests his trust on it will not be disappointed. That means that for you who are believers it is precious, but for unbelievers the stone rejected by the builders has proved to be the keystone, a stone to stumble over, a rock to bring men down. They stumble over it because they do not believe in the world. It was the fate in store for them. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a consecrated nation, a people set apart to sing the praises of God who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. The Word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God still and trust in me. There are many rooms in my father's house. If there were not, I should have told you. I'm going now to prepare a place for you, and after I have gone and prepared you a place, I shall return to take you with me, so that where I am, you may be too. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said, Lord, we do not know where you're going, so how can we know the way? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. If you know me, you know my Father too. From this moment you know him and have seen him. Philip said, Lord, let us see the Father and then we shall be satisfied. Have I been with you all this time, Philip, said Jesus to him, and still you do not know me. To have seen me is to have seen the Father. So how can you say, let us see the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words I say to you I do not speak as from myself. It is the Father living in me who is doing this work. You must believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Believe it on the evidence of this work if for no other reason. I tell you most solemnly, whoever believes in me will perform the same works as I do myself. He will perform even greater works because I am going to the Father. The Gospel of the Lord. I notice from the news these days that Britain, especially in London, is woefully short of affordable housing. With an influx of new immigrants, the situation is getting even more acute. That being said, there are also an enormous amount of vacant properties in London, which really shouldn't be. But from today's Gospel, we have the consolation of knowing that the same won't be true in the world to come. Jesus says to the apostles, 
There are many rooms in my father's house. If there were not, I should have told you, and now I'm going to prepare a place for you. These words are for all of us, not just the apostles. Now, having a place prepared for us is one thing, but taking up that place is indeed another. You know that the very early Christians weren't known as Christians, they were known as followers of the way. And in the second reading, Peter writes, set yourselves close to Jesus. Now being close to him will mean we become true followers of the way which leads to life. The two disciples on the road to Emmaus that we heard about a couple of Sundays ago, initially they saw Jesus as a stranger until he revealed himself to them at the breaking of bread, after which they felt really close to him, really one with him. The same reason also says, the same reading also says that Jesus was rejected by men but chosen by God. So following the way to our Father's house will include rejection of some kind or another. If Jesus was rejected, then we can expect to be rejected too. By standing by Christ and by our Christian beliefs, I may sometimes feel alone and misunderstood even by family and friends. Being distant from our families and friends during this present lockdown, that can get us down. But following Jesus faithfully will not mean that people will always want to be close to us. John the Baptist's clarion call was, if you remember, prepare a way for the Lord, make his path straight. So the way to God's kingdom, the way to our Father's house, may be narrow, but is also straight. It has no blind alleyways. It is us, not God, who put obstacles in the way. We can deviate, of course, from the straight and narrow and get lost, but Jesus came to seek out and to save those who are lost. If we turn back to him with our hearts after a fall, we'll be well and truly back on track. Now this way to the Father, this way to our eternal life is also an illuminated way. Following Jesus will mean that we will not be walking in darkness. God has called us, the scripture says, out of darkness into his wonderful light. Some years ago now, I remember coming back from Ireland late, one foggy night in December, when my car actually went on fire. Whilst driving on a narrow road at some out of the way place in central Wales, it was fairly a fairly scary experience, I can tell you. There was no smartphones around then. I had taken a wrong turn and I lost my way in the darkness. Seeing at one light in the distance, I walked across a couple of fields, knocked on the door and after some hesitancy, understandably enough, the people turned out to be ever so helpful. They even drove me to the nearest railway station. I left the car, understandably enough, with them. And the station was about 10 miles away. The question we could ask is, have we ever come across anyone who seemed to have lost their way in life? Whom we've helped to turn to the right path? Or have we put more obstacles in their way? Jesus is the way then, which leads to life. If we always stick by him, a straight, 
Little well sign way opens up before us. Our final destination, however, may be some distance away, but we'll have no fear of arriving at the wrong address. God bless you all. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice from your hands, for praise and glory in his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of one supreme Godhead, grant, we pray, that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the Lamb not slain, who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with Paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers of the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, found of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the Jew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to the disciples, saying, 
Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Only we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your Church spread throughout the world and bring forth the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Ralph our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. Jesus taught us to call God our Father, and so we say with confidence, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called the Supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
I am the true vine, and you are the branches, says the Lord. Whoever remains in me, and I in him, bears fruit in plenty. Alleluia. spiritual communion prayer for those who can't receive Holy Communion sacramentally. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to have you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as having already come, and I unite myself entirely to you. Never let me be separated from you. Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O oh Lord and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thank you all for tuning into this Mass and have a nice day, everyone. <laughs>